It's a close match in rainy Washington state, but one thing sets the team in green apart from any other. On their helmets, the emblem of the Richland bombers is a mushroom cloud. There have been attempts to change the school's 30-year-old logo, but they've all failed. Now there's even a clothing line. I don't think they should play. No. Making money for the school. Tell us about the kind of bombers motif in the school. It's everywhere. What, what does it sort of signify to you? It's seen in a different light by like our community because it's something that we kind of um, took part in, but we don't see it as something destructive. We see it as something that kind of brings us together and it's a symbol of our past and our history. My grandpa was personally thankful for the use of the atomic bomb during World War II. So is that a reason for you to celebrate it? Partially, because I wouldn't be here right now if something were to have happened. I have relatives who live in like Indiana and Ohio, and I remember going over there and like wearing a Richland bomber shirt, and they're like, "What are you wearing? What is on your shirt?" And they were just, they were like surprised by it. But then once you explain it, but they didn't take it negatively. But I've definitely heard negative reactions numerous times from a lot of different people. But it's mo mostly people who aren't you know within the community. Along the main street through Richland is the Atomic Brew Pub, where the beers they make are given unusual names. This is our Half-Life Hefeweizen. Nice cloudy wheat beer, light, easy to drink. Cheers. How do you come up with the names? Um, if I can't come up with a name initially uh, based on the local region, I'll pull out the periodic table of elements. We'll find an element that actually matches with the name of the beer. General Manager Dave Acton has lived in this area all his life. It's always been kind of nice. It's been part of what I've grown up with. Uh, as far as the business, um, it's nice to give homage to the people that did the Manhattan Project to help to bring the quick end of the war. Uh, and a nice little play on words doesn't hurt business either. The people of Richland know their town played a key role in World War II. 1943, the Nazi war machine raged through Europe, and America worried Hitler was developing the ultimate weapon. So it set up the Manhattan Project, the top secret rush to build an atom bomb. Within weeks, a site was chosen, a remote corner of America's Pacific Northwest, along the Columbia River, north of Richland. Hundreds of square miles were set aside, an army of workers brought in and housed in trailers and dormitories. Virtually overnight, the self-contained community of Hanford sprang up. It's a military secret. Just keep your wits together. That's the safest way to keep it. These are critical times. Be careful of espionage. In such critical times. Hanford became the second largest city in the state, home to 50,000, and life seemed pretty good. In this government town, patriotic workers enjoyed full employment. Meanwhile, engineers worked at a frantic pace. In just 11 months, they completed B Reactor, the world's first plutonium production plant. But secrecy was essential. Few knew exactly what they were working on until August 1945. We won the race of discovery against the Germans. Plutonium from Hanford was used in the nuclear bomb dropped on Nagasaki. Soon after, the Japanese surrendered and World War II ended. Only afterwards, did employees discover the purpose of their work, but their efforts are not forgotten. Patriotism runs deep in Richland, where many Hanford workers lived. At the high school, there's a mural of a B-17 bomber called the Day's Pay. The military bought it using donations from the townspeople in 1944. But the Hanford nuclear site lasted well beyond World War II. 
For more than 40 years, the perceived Soviet threat drove the Cold War and a huge build-up of nuclear weapons. Nine reactors at Hanford helped make the US a superpower. But the end of the Cold War meant the end for Hanford too. Plutonium production stopped by 1990. Today, this vast site is largely deserted. The reactors are silent, the makeshift city a ghost town. And tour boats run a brisk trade, taking visitors up the Columbia River and back in time. Richland was less uh, than 300 people up until 1943. But in 1943, things changed. The journey upriver takes more than an hour through wilderness that once hid a secret. Now, if you want to see the world's first full-scale nuclear reactor look straight upstream. River traffic used to be forbidden here. The shore is still a restricted zone. But this unlikely tourist attraction is growing in popularity. Further upstream, Brett and Rachel are launching their boat. But they're not tourists. Okay. They're environmentalists, worried about radioactivity at the Hanford site. The water quality uh, except for the radioactive waste is very, very high, it's very clear, cold water. But then at the same time, we go around the bend up here and we see the most polluted place in, in North America. As we enter the Hanford zone, old signposts hint at its history. If you hear a steady three-minute siren, leave the area immediately. Rachel pulls out a Geiger counter. So what's the reading? Uh, it's this I'm OK with this. <laughs> this, is, this is all right. It makes me very nervous, <laughs> sort of being, just being here and knowing the history. From buildings like that, millions of gallons of water was pumped from the river up to the reactors to cool the fuel rods. And then the same water, heated and contaminated, was dumped right back in the river. And this went on for decades. Nowadays, the concern is that radioactive waste that's stored in underground tanks has leaked and is percolating down through the earth into the groundwater and could leach back into the river. How contaminated do you believe the water is? Would I stick my hand in here? Yeah, I'd be comfortable being in the river here. Um, would I, you know, eat mulberries from a bush on the shore where that's concentrated? Probably not. The Columbia River runs for some 300 miles downstream of Hanford, a source of drinking water for millions and a major salmon spawning ground. The goal is here to clean it up so it's a usable site, so that it's meeting the safety standards. And, and that's what the, the, we're asking um, for the Department of Energy to do. How fast do you think the American government is at tackling this? Uh, it's been it's been a disaster. It's been one of the worst failures of of any project of a bureaucracy uh, that, that that you can imagine. I mean, we've spent billions of dollars trying to clean up this site, and we still uh, have radioactive waste coming into it. And we're hoping with the new administration that we see some of that change. Huge excavations of contaminated riverbank hint at the work underway. It's been going on for 20 years. Hundreds of buildings have been demolished. Hundreds remain. Thousands of gallons of plutonium-contaminated waste have been taken away. Thousands of gallons are still there. Engineers built 177 underground tanks to store radioactive waste. More than a third have leaked. So far, seven have been emptied. The US spends $2 billion a year at Hanford. The fallout from America's plutonium production line is now the biggest nuclear cleanup in the world. And yet some of this site is being preserved. Is this on? Okay. Um, 
These people are lucky to be here. We had uh, so many people that wanted to come on these tours, and we're very excited this year to be able to offer about 5,000 seats to people coming out to the reactor. That's a record by far. In fact, 20,000 applied for a handful of free tours run by the US Department of Energy. We drive through land untouched for more than 60 years. Hundreds of square miles now protected by law for their raw beauty. A buffer zone around the top secret Hanford nuclear weapons facility. No matter what you end up thinking about the whole process, you, will, you probably, 99% of you probably will come to the conclusion that at least the engineering was amazing.